Good morning. The words of Jesus are the light that illuminates our everyday journeys and is the wisdom that guides us. Before we begin, let us silently commit ourselves to be a disciple of Christ. Welcome everyone on this beautiful Sunday morning. As we begin Mass today, please remember Deacon Stephen Hayes. Stephen was serving here at St. Mary's for many years. He died this past week and I'm sure his family will be most grateful for our prayers at this time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Acknowledging our sins, we now prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts 
may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you shall serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. And Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This saying is hard. Who can accept it? How about us? Is it a hard one for us? You know, every now and then they do those uh, polling things. And I think one of the most recent ones said that 
about 80% of the Catholics in our country believe in the real presence of the Eucharist. It's hard. And the Lord is reminding us that to believe in the body and blood and soul and divinity of Christ present in the Eucharist comes from the Father. That's what Peter was reminding us of too. He was saying that it's the Father that has revealed this to us. And so we understand, don't we, that uh, they were quarreling among themselves, saying, uh, how can he give us his flesh to eat? It is remarkable, isn't it? That the Lord is sharing his very self with us. And sometimes, and maybe it strikes you, after we all receive communion and we are here, we become maybe more the body of Christ than at any other time in our week or day or month. Well, you know, my deacon year, which was a while ago, I spent the summer in Cuernavaca, Mexico. I stayed in the home of a beautiful family there, and it's a wonderful experience I will always remember. Part of the memory is how I gradually got used to eating new foods. There were times when dinner was served that my appetite all of a sudden became more of a question mark. And I would look at some unidentifiable dish of food, or maybe I've already began to wonder at this aroma coming out of the kitchen. What is that? There was always plenty to eat of that with which I was familiar. But the family enjoyed it when I would try something new to me and something that was a favorite of theirs. And you know what? It made us all a little closer when even though I didn't need to, but I chose to share their food with them. It brought us together more. It was a means of unity, and all I can say is it was delicious. It was delicious. Maybe you've had this experience, too. You go to someone's home, and you're invited to try some food that's new to you. It's offered as something that others want to share with you. You will have plenty to eat without it, but you try it for what it is a sign of sharing, unity. Missionaries, they encounter this often when they travel to other lands and live among people of various cultures. Eating the people's food is a sign of unity with them. In the Eucharist, Jesus is telling us that as the bread of life, he is sharing himself with us at a special meal that we may be united with him. And why? Because otherwise we will starve. Here's that quotation. Eating this bread, we become one body with him. It's a way of saying that all that he is, his entire experience, his values and attitudes, his relations with God 
and with the world is life-giving nourishment for us. He is the bread which God provides for the world's nourishment, tasty and life-giving, nourishing our humanness, feeding our need for meaning and sense, training us in the taste of what is healthy, weaning us away from the junk food of the unwholesome values and attitudes that we are solicited daily to take for our nourishment. Christ Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. The Eucharist is the healthy food for our life in Christ. It's a life of trusting, forgiving, sacrificing, persevering, loving, sharing. And it is only with the bread of life that we can accomplish this. The Eucharist then is the meal. And what a meal. Where you and I share the bread of life it's within the context of this liturgy, what we're doing right now. We share the space for worship here. We share the inspired word of scripture. We even share our hard-earned bread and butter in the offering. And God responds with the gift of his Son, shared in the Eucharistic meal as body broken, blood poured out, making us one with him. It's like the song, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many throughout the world, we are one people in one Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
we now offer our prayers before God today. That the church will continue to show the world that following Christ is worth the risk, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That all nations establish and enact laws that promote right relationships and the good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful, as we continue our abiding love for the Eucharist, may we see in Jesus someone who knows our anger and intense sorrow during our times of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from illness or injury, may they find Christ's loving care in those who help them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, for the Nativity of Mary Parish, may we, through continued prayer, experience growth in our parish membership and in our school enrollment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our many brothers and sisters throughout the world who are suffering from political upheaval and also for so many in North America and Central America who are coping right now with very severe and powerful storms. May they be safe. Gracious and ever-living God, grant a favorable hearing to all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Prayers and glory to His name. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness which in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You indeed are holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on a journey of life. 
Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may now be counted and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, says the Lord, and I will raise him up on the last day.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'd just like to mention that after Mass today, in the back of church, we are once again renewing the program of the Traveling Chalice. It's kind of a vocation program here at St. Mary's, and many of you have participated before and know that you are welcome to do so again. There's more information and a sign-up sheet, and uh, Gabe is back there to help answer any questions as well. Also, um, after this Mass, down in the Fellowship Hall, we're also inviting anyone who might want more information on the RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, to please know that you're welcome to go down. Colleen is there to provide information or to answer questions. And either you or maybe someone you know may want to take a closer look at the Catholic faith. And this is a wonderful way in which to do that. And again, that's right after this Mass down in Fellowship Hall. Also, in regard to our brothers and sisters in Haiti, if any of you would like to make a financial donation to help uh, relieve part of the misery that they are suffering there in that country, know that you can do so by making your donation to St. Mary's Church. Just put Haiti on it, and we then will collect all of those and forward them to the diocese, which in turn will uh, make sure that they get to the proper uh, apostolate and missions in Haiti to help our, our people there. And uh, finally, uh, there will be no masses or confessions here at St. Mary's this week. I'll be gone on uh, retreat. And I, I mention that because I'm hoping when I come back you'll notice an improvement. <laughs> the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Church of God.